Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance at your lotus feet. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj, um, whenever you are ready, if you could kindly enlighten us from Canto number seven, chapter eight, and today from verse 30 and 31, please. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj, you can take over Hare Krishna. Maharaj, I think you are on mute. Okay, give me a minute for here, and I'll be ready to go. You all set up? Um, I need the meeting ID, Maharaj. The email you showed me, the first screen. Let's see, they're already here. So, the first one again. I think I'm going to be meeting details. Uh, I don't know where to go. One minute, uh, Nina. Okay. Uh, are you going to go to escape? Is that escape, it? Yeah. And information. What do you want to? What do you want to do here? Uh, we're in a public meeting here, so I'm I'm coming up in a minute or so. Can you hear me, Nina? Yes, yes, Maharaj. We can hear you, we can see you, and we also see the display of the Bhagavatam verse today. Okay, here's the meeting ID. Is this that one? We can ask no, that's not the meeting ID. That's the other one. This is the one you use, Matra, Maharaj. The job. This one, this one. This one. Not this one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Prabhuji, are you looking for the meeting ID of the Zoom? If you want, I can give it to you. Passcode, Maharaj, Mataji. I can give it to you. Are you ready? Yeah, passcode, tell me. 803 Okay, one second. 803 Okay, that's it. That is the passcode. We are connected. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Where do I go now? You will go back to your Zoom meeting here. Okay, yeah, we'll have to open it up again. But okay. you are right here. She is presenting the sloka. I know, but I can't. It's too small. It has to be. Oh, it has to be full screen. This one. Yeah, just put standard, standard. Go to standard. Okay. Yeah. So that's the standard. Mm -hmm. um, put screens on the bottom. Okay. Okay, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we're in a series of verses where Lord Nishringadev has just appeared and he has just killed Marani Kashipu. So we're in that series of verses. Samrambadus preksha karala lochanam vyatananatam vihihan swa jivaya asriglavaktaruna kesarananam Yatatramali Dvipahatyaya Harihi Translation Lord Nishringadev's mouth and mane was sprinkled with drops of blood, 
and his fierce eyes full of anger were impossible to look at. Licking the edge of his mouth with his tongue, the supreme personality of Godhead in the Shringadev, decorated with a garland of intestines taken from Harani Kashipu's abdomen, resembled a lion that had just killed an elephant. Hmm. Report. The hair on Lord Nishringadev's face, being sprinkled with drops of blood, was reddish and looked very beautiful. Lord Nishringadev pierced Harani Kashipu's abdomen with his nails, pulled out the demon's intestines and wore them as a garland which enhanced his beauty. Thus the Lord became very fearsome, like a lion engaged in fighting an elephant. Text 31. Nihan kuro patita ritsaro ruham Israjit yasya nucharan udayudan Ahan samastan nakasastra pani beer Yukto Nukupat Sahasra Saha. <laughs> Translation The Supreme Personality of Godhead, who had many, many arms, up first uprooted Harani Kashipo's heart and then threw him aside and turned towards the demon soldiers. These soldiers had come in thousands to fight with him with raised weapons and were very faithful followers of Harani Kashipu. But Nishringadev killed all of them merely with the ends of his nails. Purport. Since the creation of the material world, there have been two kinds of men, the devas and the asuras. The devas are always faithful to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and the asuras are always atheists who defy the supremacy of the Lord. At the present moment throughout the world, the atheists are extremely numerous. They are trying to prove that there is no God and that everything takes place due to a combination of permutations of material elements. Thus, the material world is becoming more and more godless, and consequently, everything is in a disturbed condition. If this continues, the Supreme Personality of Godhead will certainly take action, as he did in the case of Virani Kashipu. Within a second, Harani Kashipu and his followers were destroyed, and similarly, if this godless civilization continues, it will be destroyed in a second, simply by the movement of the finger of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The demons should therefore be careful and curtail their godless civilization. They should take advantage of the Krishna conscious movement and become faithful to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, otherwise they are doomed. As Harani Kashipu was killed in a second, the godless civilization can be destroyed at any moment. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gena Jena Salakaya Chaksun Militam Gena Tasmai Shri Gurudvaina Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swapadanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Paschatya De Sitarine Vanchakalpa Taru Vischa Kripa Sindhu Paevacha Titanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nina, go back to the purport in verse number 31 here. Okay, keep that up like that. There you go, perfect. So Srila Prabhupada has mentioned in both his lectures and in his books, he said in 1972 in one particular Srimad Bhagavatam lecture that the demons in this world are only increasing. Mm -hmm. They'll continue to increase and the society will become more and more godless and very much in a disturbed condition. 
But he said, don't worry. He said, Krishna will protect his devotees. He said, but we have to take shelter. He gave the example of both Prahlad Maharaj and Devaki, who both were harassed by powerful demons. Devaki, when she was in the prison cell. Before then, her brother, Kamsa, was going to kill her because he had heard an omen in the sky that the eighth son of his sister, Devaki, Devaki was actually Kamsa's sister, would will become the death of Kamsa. And so Kamsa didn't even hesitate to think. He simply was going to kill his sister. Somehow, by the arrangement of the Lord, her husband, Vasudev, came in and was able to pacify Kamsa and give him a formula that he would take all of the children and give it to him at the time of their birth. So Kamsa agreed in that. But Devaki was living and Vasudev were living in the pr prison cell for many, many months, actually years, under the, under the control of this powerful demon, Kamsa. But somehow or other, Krishna arranged to take birth and escape and go to Vrindavan. And at the same time, De Vasudev and Devaki was freed by the power of the Lord's mercy in the form of bewildering Kamsa in such a way that he actually apologized for all of his offenses. Of course, his apology was just some formality, wasn't sincere, but he did apologize and let Vasudev and Devaki go. Um, Palad Maharaj, we have just finished this pretty much most important Leela of the Lord in the Srimad Bhagavatam where Prahlad Maharaj, just a young five-year-old boy, you might say a helpless boy, was under the control of his powerful father. But, pra but Prahlad wasn't, wasn't afraid of his father. At the same time, he was always concerned that he would do something to help his father become aware that his demonic activities were just causing him unhappiness. And Prahlad could see that. Oh, you're a big demon, but I can see you're not happy. <laughs> and it's a fact. No one can be happy if they disobey the laws of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, no matter how powerful they may be, and no matter how, how, what kind of position they may have in the world. Their happiness is not there because the money activities or irreligious activities simply cause people distress and suffering. That is the laws of material nature. That is the laws of God. So, but Harani Kashipu was very disturbed by his son who was had taken the side, as he said, of my enemy. You have become the, uh, you, you have become the friend of my enemy. Therefore, you're also my enemy. I mean, it was his son, his only son. No, he actually had four sons, but... Uh, his dear son, he was the most dear to him, to Harani Kashipu. But because of the demoniac mentality, Prabhupada says the demons will do anything. And he makes that point. He says it over and over. They don't hesitate to do whatever they need to do to fulfill their own desires for sense gratification. They'll kill their mother. They'll kill their brother. They'll kill anyone. They'll do whatever they can. They're ruthless, they're heartless, and they're simply determined to fulfill their own desires. And so Prahlad Maharaj was put into so many difficulties, as we read from the previous verses. He was thrown in hot boiling oil, but because he simply meditated on the Supreme Lord in devotion, the oil had no effect. His Demoniac followers of Harani Kashipu drew their powerful swords and were trying to stab him. Swords had no effect. He threw him off a mountain. Somehow or other, Krishna was on the bottom of the mountain and caught him. <laughs> Whatever Harani Kashipu tried to do, there was even one particular type of torture that's not mentioned in the Bhagavatam. It's mentioned in another scripture called Hari Bhakti Sudodaya, where uh, uh, Harani Kasipu employed these 
tantric Brahmins to put spells on her on, on, on his son for love. And so they gathered around in a circle around uh, a lot, and they start chanting these mantras, which are meant to kill. I mean, these Brahmins can do that. It's also mentioned that there are Brahmins even today who know how to kill you simply by mantra. But if you take shelter of Krishna, these mantras become ineffectual. So that's, of course, that was Prahlad. He was absorbed in thinking of the Lord. He wasn't pretty much even aware of what was happening around him because he was so much in samadhi on the Lord's lotus feet. And the mantras had no effect. But when you chant mantra to kill someone, the mantra has to go somewhere. And so the mantras came back to the Brahmins. <laughs> and they were, they were dying. And they were feeling the effects of their own evil ways. And uh, they, they said to Prahlad, Prahlad, save us. <laughs> they called out for Prahlad's help after they tried to kill him. And now they're being killed by their own mantra. And Prahlad actually did. By his own power, he withdrew the effects of the mantras and the Brahmins were saved. <laughs> so that's the compassion of a Vaishnava. Although a Vaishnava, people will make a Vaishnava an enemy. An enemy, a, a, a devotee will not make another person their enemy. They will see that person as simply misguided and therefore they pray for them and they hope that somehow or other they get free from their demoniac activities. But a devotee doesn't have any enemies. Prahlad Maharaj teaches that. He says, friends and enemies are simply concoctions of the mind. Who is a friend and who is an enemy? We make friends and enemies based on what people can do for us. But a real friend is Krishna. He's called Suhit. There are three types of friend, Bandhu, Mitra, and Suhit. Suhit means the real friend, that friend who always has your best interests at heart. And that only has one, one place, that's Krishna. There we have Bandhu and Mitra. Mitra means official friend. Bandhu means more or less a closer friend. They're in, but in the material world, who is friends and who is enemies? <laughs> if I make you my friend because you have something to give me. But a real friend is a person who cares about you and wants to help you and do things to, to benefit you. That's a real friend. And they're not looking for anything from their own gain. Okay, so here, as Srila Prabhupada can continually, he makes a real strong point. He says, the demons should wake up and curl this demoniac civilization because if they don't, that the Supreme Lord at any moment can destroy the whole place. <laughs> and he will. He has that power. He doesn't even have to come. He simply, he makes, if he desires, all the demon, demons can be killed in one second, simply by his desire. The Lord is completely powerful, and as all his energies work completely under his control, when he desires, parasya shakti virahaya suyate, Swabhaviki jnana balak kriyacha, all his energies work all according to his desire. And all he has to do is desires and the energies move according to his desire. That's the power of the Supreme Lord. So here it says, but it's interesting to note that there are two kinds of created people. There are the devas and the asuras. The asuras are also created beings. They have their own planets. They're not something that a person becomes an asura, that is also possible. But there are a, a culture of people who are actually born into demoniac uh, planets. They, there's many planets around the earth or on the, they're below the earth. These are demoniac planets. Above the earth are the higher planets, the asuras. And as the karmic collection of the particular world moves either up more pious or down more impious people take birth into that according to the karmic collection so people take birth by karma karma daiva matrena and so when the world becomes very sinful more and more demons take birth into the world and therefore you see even today many of the children that are born in today's society 
they're they're very fierce. They go and shoot their friends in the schools, and you know, and it's just crazy. Vanda Samkara, that's talked about. So um, yeah, so therefore, in order to keep that from happening, it's important to push on this Krishna conscious movement. Because as the Krishna conscious movement gets pushed on, people will become not only pious, but will they become religious and spiritualized. And then the karma of the planet will move upward. So what's happening today in today's world is that there are the demons are increasing and the devotees are increasing. The middle of the road for people who are neither aligned with either one are becoming smaller, smaller. The middle of the road used to be the majority of the population of the world. But now, as time goes on and people become more sinful, there's a very nice verse in the particular this same canto where it says, when, when the mode of goodness, that means good qualities, are prominent in society, the devas are in control. So people are happy. And people are living a, a pious life, not necessarily a spiritual life, but pious anyway. Pious is the mode of goodness. It's still within the material realm. And so when that becomes prominent in the society, then uh, we say religious principles become stronger and people become more and more developing in good qualities. And that's the mode of goodness. When, when the mode of passion becomes stronger, then the demons become prominent and people struggle and suffer because of the effects of demoniac population. And people think that by engaging in sense gratification and collecting as much money as they can, they will be happy. They consider that the standard of happiness in the world, to have material things, to have a nice material position, to have a, to be surrounded by people who have the same uh, accomplishments, the same goals in life, is success in life. They consider nice family, big cars, big houses, nice computers, and all of the what we say decorations of a opulent material civilization. They consider that success. That's the mode of passion, and that's ro ruled by the by the demons. Now, when people, when it goes down to the mode of ignorance, then the yaksha and the rakshasas, then society becomes hell, just plain hell, just hell. So we're somewhere in between the two lower modes right now. <laughs> <laughs> but still, the demigods are working to help the devotees propagate spiritual life. So many of the, the uh, children that are born in our movement with devotee parents, they are actually coming from the higher planets. They're coming into this movement to assist Lord Chaitanya in preaching Krishna consciousness. This is going on today, right now. So many of the children who are born are actually, they're very advanced spiritually, and you can see they're very intellectually also quite astute, many of the children, when they're born in parents like that. So that's happening, and at the same time, the demons are increasing. So you're getting this uh, dichotomy. And soon, what will happen, there will be a major confl conflagration where the demons will fight against the demons, not against the devotees. Prabhupada said the next war will be demons against demons, and that will reduce the demoniac population. <laughs> he says... That's cleaning house, <laughs> getting rid of the trash. Just like, you know, when you're living in the house, your trash builds up, you know, you can't take it anymore. You decide, hey, who's supposed to take out the trash? So you get, you find someone. And when the trash is out, the place becomes more livable. <laughs> so in the same way, this material world is is governed by the three modes of material nature. And people are meant to live at least a pious life so they can ultimately come to the platform of spiritual life, which is transcendental to even the mode of goodness. And therefore, this is the goal of human life. But when things gravitate down towards 
the lower modes, then there is chaos in the world. And that's why you see all the, you wonder why all of these things are happening. It's because of demons. Prabhupada said, material energy, maya, is our friend. We don't have any problem with maya. Maya is our friend, but maya must serve the demons. And because the demons are here, she works to help serve the demons in propagating their own demoniac. And the demons are very intelligent. And they're called dus kritina. Kritina means merit. And dus means that merit which is misdirected. There's sukritina. Sukritina means that merit that is rightly used. And that merit that is misdirected and that demons that are very intelligent, extremely intelligent. You can see all of the electronic gadgets that they have produced now. <laughs> Amazing stuff. You wouldn't, the th the thirty. there's at least 30, what we say, 30% of the uh, technological advances that in, in today's society are still not even available to the public. I mean, they have so many things, you know, they put a little pin in your wall, they can see your whole house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's just one small thing. So the technology in today's society is so advanced. I mean, it's me. It's it's on the level of mystic power. <laughs> Prabhupada said that also. But these are these, but it's being misused in order to control and exploit this the population of the world. So therefore, what is the solution? Lord Shaitani has, has come 1486, 500 and 38 years ago to bring about a revolution in this particular time. Srila Prabhupada came to bring that revolution of Lord Chaitanya's teachings to the world. And for the next 5,000 years, there will be a gradual increase in piety and ultimately spirituality. So we should take advantage of that and also become an instrument for Lord Chaitanya's mercy by becoming Krishna conscious and spreading Krishna consciousness to others. It's not about sitting back and watching what's happening. <laughs> you can't. If you're not going to, if you're not involved with bringing about spirituality into the world, you'll also be somewhat victimized by what's going on in this world. And Krishna protects his devotee. As he protected Prahlad, as he protected uh, Devaki, it says that he will always protect his devotee. His devotee is very dear to him. And those who take shelter of the Lord are always protected by the Lord. Rake Krishna Moreke. More Krishna Rakeke. If Krishna wants to kill you, you're dead. <laughs> if Krishna wants to keep you alive, there is no force in existence that can even harm a hair on your head. The Lord is all-powerful and his protective energy for his devotee is the thing that he enjoys most. He likes to give protection to his devotees. But the devotees have to show that they want it by taking shelter of the process of bhakti, which means to seriously chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, not just as a duty, but as a, as a way of life. The holy name of the Lord is... And the, it is said it's uh, nit. What is it? Mukta, mukta nitya bada. No, what's that verse? Nama chintamani krishnas chaitanya rasa vigra. Hornya nitya mukta abhinna twam nami nami no. Krishna's name and Krishna are the same. It gives complete protection, complete insulation from all of the effects of the material energy and it keeps one in contact with the lord in devotion so this is how to push back the demoniac civilization but if the and Prabhupada also told us that when we, he was here years ago he said we could take over the whole world in 18 days we are not ready this this krishna conscious movement is orchestrated by the Supreme Lord himself. Therefore, it is the direct source of power within spiritual life. 
but the devotees have to come up to the standard to get to become qualified to be instruments in because the, the lord can do it himself as it says here if the demoniac civilization gets so bad then yada yada hi dharmasya lanir bhavati bharata bhutanam dharmasya tadat maham srijami aham paritranayam sarunam vinasanaya chaduskritam dharma samstarpanartayam sambhavami yuge yuge so when things go down but then people the devotees ask Prabhupada will Krishna come again Prabhupada said Krishna is already here chant Hare Krishna <laughs> what is that verse uh, Kali Kale Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar Krishna has appeared in the form of his holy name. So that's the incarnation in this age. He's also come in the form of his deity. That's another manifestation of incarnation. And he's come in the form of the process of pure devotional service. So there is so much of the Krishna's personal presence through this, this spiritual energy. He takes shelter of these things then we are free from the effects of demoniac civilization and at the same time we're moving back towards our natural position of eternal servant of the supreme personality of god so anyway it's nice to know because i mean bhagavatam is prophetic it doesn't tell you just what's happening at the time, it tells you what's going to happen in the future. And Prabhupada said, this material society, Western society, technological society, he said it will collapse. He said it. He said it. It's actually the book. If you got a copy of my book, there's a PR code in there, QR code. If you scan the QR code on your phone, you can hear Srila Prabhupada speaking about the downfall of Western culture. <laughs> and it's happening already, and you can see it today. So we don't have anything to worry about. All we have to do is take, stay fixed in our devotional service and take the opportunity to give this mercy to others because there are so many people who are suffering and are looking for a way out of this suffering. The demons are very much harassing people today. I was just talking to one young lady. She was telling me how her daughter was being victimized by these demons who captured her and forced her into a, I don't know, the Axis situation. Anyway, she was captivated and exploited. So this is going on. Uh, everywhere in the world, there are 2 million children every year that are stolen by people who drive by cars and pick up these kids and send them to different countries to turn them into concubines or to kill them and to drink their blood. This is going on. They, they actually do that. There are really heavy demons in the world today, really powerful persons. They've come from other planets. They're, they control some of the uh, governments in our present society. But don't worry, Krishna consciousness is there. We take shelter of Krishna consciousness. We can be freed from these effects. When we fail to take shelter of Krishna, when we leave ourselves open to be victimized by what's going on in the world. So it's... Krishna likes to take care of his devotees, but he wants his devotees to, to, to want him. If we don't really want him, then in one sense, he, 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 does, he still protects us, but not completely. He'll protect you, but he won't protect you completely until you really want him. Then the compaction is complete. And that means to chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Okay, so uh, let's see. Okay, we can stop here. Nina, we could open it up for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thanks for such a wonderful um, class and lecture. It was so, so full of nectar. Maharaj, one natural question 
that arises. I, I think, I think the devotees might be thinking the same thing. You were saying Krishna will not protect unless and until you want him to protect. He will, and, but not completely. No, not completely. So the question, Maharaj, you know, the demon is in our head too. So the good and the bad. The reason both... why, let me, let me explain one thing. The reason why he, you're not getting his complete protection is that you're seeking protection somewhere else rather than going to him. So under that false protection, you're not getting protection. You mean we are thinking that we can somehow manage yes, it no. by ourselves? Right, and you have your own programs in order to do that too. But then, Maharaj, hasn't shouldn't we think that Krishna has given us intelligence? We should be in by taking His name, leaving the results to Him, try to solve it. Yeah, yeah, but you have to know that it depends on Him, not on your your programs. Make your programs. Like Krishna says, you know, ultimately, I give the results. <laughs> right. Your efforts are what you show to Krishna by what you are wanting, but ultimately he gives the results. But if you go outside and look for things in a material sense in order to somehow or other fortify your safety, in other words, if you think, well, yeah, Krishna's there, but I still need this, I still need that, I still need this. You make some basic attempts to do things. I mean, it's just like you can't say, well, I'll walk across the street in a busy thoroughfare and the car won't hit me because Krishna will protect me. Well, that'd be foolish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's foolish. Krishna will tell you not to walk across the street, but you don't listen. <laughs> Yeah, intelligence. He works through your intelligence, exactly. So he gives you the intelligence. And if you take the intelligence, he says there, Sarvasya chaham ridisani visto matat smritir yajnanam apohanam cha. I give you knowledge. I give you remembrance. If you want to forget, I'll help you to do that also. So, um, therefore, if we have full faith in the Lord and depend on his mercy and work in that same way, then we are in the best position to to be free from all of these sufferings that come by way of living in this material world. Not only the things that are given to us by the demoniac population, but just the sufferings that come by living in this material world. Okay. To have a body means to suffer. <laughs> Maharaj, you were saying that Maya Devi is there to serve the demons. So this is, again, uh, it's by Lord's will, right? That they serve the demons. So it's it's fun for Krishna sometimes, I think. Well, or did they want, the demon wanted that? I mean, well, you have to understand the material energy works in a certain way. And Krishna's putting it in a certain way. Just like a watchmaker will make a watch and he'll make it in a certain way. And if you follow the rules on how the watch works, you get all the benefits. But if you do it in some other, other way, then the watch won't work or you won't get the, you know, the accurate time. So the material energy works according to Krishna's arrangement. Mm -hmm. But then it has its own power. Shristi, Stisti, Palaya, Sadhayega. It works according to how it, and Krishna is outside of it. It's working automatically by his energies. He's not directly involved in it anymore. He only gets directly involved when the devotees take shelter. Then he takes care of his devotees. Otherwise, we're victimized by the material energy. We wonder, why do bad things happen to good people? Because we still think that our, our material energy can give us protection so the demons, they worship the material energy. And therefore, they worship the material energy. Durga, Chandi, all of these personalities are spiritual beings, but their, their service is to serve those who are engaged in material activities. Those in the most, just like you have Bhadrakali, you have Chandi, you have Ambika. These are all manifestations of the Lord's internal energy to control 
and to fulfill the desires of the materialists and the material energy. People worship Durga. What? For what? For power. People worship Ganesh for material success. People worship the sun. Why? For health. People worship Shiva for liberation. But if you worship Vishnu, then all of the other benefits come automatically by worshiping the Supreme Lord, Sri Vishnu. Very nice. Thank you, Maharaj. So the demons, they worship the material energy, and therefore they know how to exploit and arrange the material energy to fulfill their selfish and lusty desires. Thank you. Wonderful response, Maharaj. Thank you. Many, many, many pranams at your lotus feet, Maharaj. Ishopanishad Mataji, are you there? I saw your hand raised. Or I don't know if your question has been answered already. Jai Prabhu, Hare Krishna, please accept my pranams. All glories to your wonderful service. I'm in Cleveland, Isho. Jai Maharaj, I'm in Georgia. <laughs> I am so disappointed that I won't be able to bow down at your lotus feet. I think I have one of your friends here. What's your name? Saran. Huh? Saran. Saran is here. <laughs> Hadi Ball. Hare Krishna, Saran. So you're having a magnetic kirtan, aren't you? <laughs> Jai Maharaj. So I just wanted to just say thank you very much for that wonderful response and request in relationship to material nature and how so many people are depending on that uh, energy for their, you know, they, they reach out and think that that energy is going to take care of them. For instance, getting a job, you know, purchasing cars. Uh, they are, they forget that uh, the Supreme controller is Krishna and we really shouldn't be reaching out to Krishna for things like that materially, though, should we? No, we take care of our needs, and then if Krishna provides, very nicely. If you actually, if you serve Krishna fully, then he, mm -hmm. knows, he knows what you need. He doesn't know what you want, but he knows what you need. He, he knows what you want, but he'll fulfill your needs, not so much your wants. If your wants are in line with your needs, then then that's fine. But Krishna will give you whatever you need to, to live in this world nicely, happily, and at the same time practice Krishna consciousness. That will happen automatically if you if you sur if you surrender to him and serve him. We make a little effort to take care of our I mean we have to arrange for housing to live in. We have to arrange for getting food, all of these things. But even if your arrangements are perfect, if Krishna doesn't want it to happen, it won't. And even if your arrangements are imperfect and you try to make the, it still Krishna will make it happen because he serves his devotees. Devotees are never in want. They always, they always depend on Krishna. Krishna provides whatever they need. Jai Maharaj, thank you so very much again. I just have to fly to Europe to see you, huh? <laughs> I'm in Cleveland. I'm not in Europe. <laughs> I know. I just, you know, I had some family things to come up that I had to go to Georgia. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, I'm in America for another two weeks yet. So. Oh, okay. So have you been to Columbus yet? Tomorrow. Today. today tomorrow today 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 okay so what are you going to get an augury july 1st okay so you're going to be here for a couple of weeks hopefully i'll get to see you maharaj or have your wonderful association Come. Hadi, hadi, ball. thank you thank you thank she, you she is upanishad was a classmate of bhakti tirtha swami mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Nice to have Mataji have with, with her association towards us. Thank you. Shiva Kumar Prabhuji, would you like to go ahead and ask your question, please? Thank you. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, the Lord Ramos Maharaj, please accept the humble obeisance during this week. Maharaj, a related question to your conversation with uh, Nina Mataji. Uh, at times it becomes difficult, Maharaj, to kind of uh, find out where to draw the boundary for our endeavors against Lord's mercy, Maharaj. Especially that our endeavor also includes certain level of planning. Right, Maharaj? But as we know, for the results, we have to depend on Krishna. And if the results do not come as we expected, that there has to be some change in the planning and in our endeavors. So at times it kind of gets difficult and confusing as to what is the direction that Krishna wants us to endeavor. Um, so something on that line, Maharaj, if you could kind of enlighten us, share your wisdom. Oh, Krishna says, I'm not responsible for anyone's happiness and distress. He has nothing to do with that. And that comes by way of our interaction with the material energy. So our disappointments that come by unfulfilled desires, it has nothing to do with Krishna. <laughs> Just the way we work. Um, the thing is, the more we surrender to Krishna, that means the more we use our time, energy, intelligence, ability, resources in the service of the Lord, the more all of the things that are needed in life can become easily available by the arrangement of the Lord. If we want to struggle separately, we can do that. And if we get something, we may be happy with that or we may not be, even if we get something. But if you just depend on Krishna, he'll take care of you. Of course, it's sometimes he takes care of you by not giving you what you want. Because it's, it's not necessary, or it's, maybe it's not beneficial for your spiritual practice. There's an, in the Christian sayings, I think, the Baptists, they say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the Lord. <laughs> so, yeah. so if he gives you something, thank you. If he takes it away, thank you. <laughs> Muslims also mean what you do not need. Which means? Which means Allah keeps from you what you do not need. So if you don't get that, you know that it is something that... Yeah, that we're getting... So one of our devotees here is saying that in the Islamic tradition, Allah keeps away from you what you don't need, and he gives you what you need. So we can be happy that whatever comes by way of the arrangement of the Lord, or you might even say by your own karma, just be satisfied. Mm -hmm. And if something doesn't happen, then you might think, did I work in the wrong way? Or is it Krishna's mercy that I didn't receive it? And then mm -hmm. that gives you a quandary. Maybe if I would have approached it in a different way, it would have worked, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we think like that sometimes. It is like <laughs> I don't want to say this. Nina will be angry with me. No, Maharaj, please don't say that. Yeah, please. Nina will be very unhappy with me. No, 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 Maharaj, please, please go ahead. So I will never how can I I don't have that audacity, <laughs> please. So Nina gave me these these this this thing called A2 milk with different flavors in it. Oh, <laughs> Honey bone milk. So, I was all ready to have one for breakfast yesterday, and when I picked it up, I dropped it on my foot. Oh. So I are thought. You, I thought maybe. Are you in pain? Huh? Are you in pain? Uh, no, it was. I mean, it was a mark there, but I, I was thought, well, boy, I must have been foolish. I dropped it on my foot. But then, okay, so I picked it up, I'm still ready to go for it, and I couldn't open it. <laughs> so I couldn't open it at all, and I tried as hard as I could to pop the top, and I couldn't even. I used some, some, you know, some devices, wouldn't open. So I thought, all right, that's the message. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave up. I said, all right, Krishna. <laughs> I just. 
<laughs> Sorry, Maharaj. Sometimes they can be quite difficult. The, the packaging is not too good. So if you put a spoon in that lid, it will open. It can pop open. Or you can ask one of the devotees. They'll be so happy to open it for you. He tried with the spoon. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, there are others. There are like six or seven. So you can try something. I'm so sorry, Maharaj. Next time, I'll try not to give you the canned one. <laughs> Next time, you open and give it to me. Yeah, <laughs> but you were traveling, so they had to be... I was sealed. thinking Krishna just didn't want me to have it, so that's how I <clears throat> did it. <clears throat> no, no, no. As soon as I accepted it that way, I felt happy. <laughs> this is a small thing, but there's <clears throat> big things that come into our life in the same way. Mm. somehow it doesn't happen we think well maybe it's not meant for me mm -hmm. was that the opulence of mm. detachment even in dealing with the demons and other things to be detached mm. so, well he te krishna that. teaches us that yeah he teaches you to become detached to things that you might be attached to mm. frustrating your ability to uh enjoy those things Maharaj, none of them opened? No. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, no, it's not like that. Okay, okay. So, it's <laughs> like every time I tried to do it, I couldn't open it. <laughs> yeah, they're quite strong. They are very, um, too much well sealed. I mean, sometimes but, I also cannot. My nails break. Yeah. The dropping it on my foot was also another indication. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please pardon me. So anyway, I try to take signs from the Lord when I do things, whether he asks me, wants me to do this or not. Sometimes I ask him, sometimes I pray, and sometimes the circumstances actually tell me whether I should go ahead and do it or not. So if we're open to that kind of communication, then we're always in a good position. There is a... Uh, a energetic medical practice called strength testing and if you touch an item and you become weak from it that's a signal from your body energetically that it's not for you yeah so dropping it is yeah there's even there's mechanical advices that help you decide what to do and what not to do <laughs> okay anyway uh where's uh, Shiv kumar is he still here Shiv kumar Prabhuji, i think he's there have you yeah. left Okay. So, um, uh, we should make an effort to do things. Mm. We should also mm. depend on the mercy of the Lord. Mm. Oh. And we, you know, it's not always so easy to understand, bro. Mm. 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 But if we live in a detached way, then even if we don't fulfill our desires, we're happy. Mm -hmm. Atta attachment causes suffering mm -hmm. detachment causes us freedom from suffering mm -hmm. but attachment to Krishna causes happiness mm -hmm. or attachment to the activities of devotional service also mm -hmm. material things you know mm -hmm. come and go mm -hmm. So, Maharaj, just one follow-up question, Maharaj, uh, to the discussion. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the elaborate answer. Even within devotional service, Maharaj, uh, I was trying to do a service uh, in the area of, uh, in the uh, in the technical area uh, in which I do the material work for uh, one of the Siksha Guru. But somehow, one after the other, there were some in impediments that I could not uh, continue or do the service, Maharaj. It kind of got stopped and some other devotee picked it up and then he just moved on. Although I had a lot of elaborate idea of how I can serve the Siksha Guru. So when I was contemplating Maharaj uh, on this uh, as to why there are so many impediments, um, the one thing that I could reflect is I have excessive attachment towards the technology, towards my uh, material I profession. Can, I can understand you said, your question. Your question is, you're attached. And so Krishna uh -huh. is teaching you how to become detached. Mm -hmm. And as a devotee, we have to learn that. Mm -hmm. So in your in your situation, you have an I think what I see is that based on your questions, 
you're very much attached to the results of your activities. Mm -hmm. Krishna is helping you learn a principle okay. by frustrating your some attempts to, to accomplish something just to teach you mm. that the world doesn't work according to your plans. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It works according to his plan. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's a good message. Mm. When we work in a detached way, we mm. get good results. Okay. okay. Mm. Because we're not it's, the, the the results are not about us. It's about mm. the. Mm. You might have been thinking, well, I'm going to do this service for this guru, and therefore he's going to give me some blessings or give me some credit and something like that. And so Krishna said, you got too much of your own self in this one. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's me, guys. Yeah. So it's 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 just a learning experience. That's right. mm -hmm. and it's important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Shri, you okay? Yes, yes, my friends. Thank you. Thank you. Made a note of it. Sri Devi, you got a question? Mataji, you're muted. Please accept my most humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for another wonderful class, Guru Maharaj. My question is, just as Maya Devi has to, uh, I mean, Durga Devi has to fulfill the material desires of the demons because they worship her, devotees have spiritual desires to serve the Lord. So does... Uh, Maya uh, Durga Devi uh, uh, assist the devotee to achieve those uh, spiritual desires that are for serving the Lord? She can, yeah. She can. And she usually is the friend of the devotees who are engaged in devotional service. Then she becomes Yoga Maya instead of Maha Maya. She brings Krishna closer to you. She can assist you. I'm not saying how she does it or when she does it, but she is an energy of Krishna, and, and we we don't have any problems with Maya. Maya is our friend. Her whole business is to make make the living entity Krishna conscious. So when we have different desires to serve in different, different ways, how are we sure that those desires are actually pleasing to the Lord? Why don't you check with your spiritual master? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Guru Parai. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mataji. Vrishba Vish Prabhuji, do you have a question for His Holiness? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj and Vaishnavas, we accept my humble obeisances. Oh, glory to Srila Prabhupada. Do you hear me? Yeah, good. So, regarding what you were saying, Maharaj, uh, the two aspects of bounding Krishna was the endeavor and his mercy. And from your talk, I understand that this is more like the endeavor shouldn't be over endeavor, it should be like some endeavor. And then mostly we should depend on the mercy of the Lord. Is that correct? Well, you should try your best. And when you're doing an activity, you should put your attention into it. You should put your uh, abilities into it. In other words, whatever you're doing, doing it in the best, best possible way. And then ultimately leave the results to the Lord. It's not that we, you know, it's not like Prabhupada would say, Krishna didn't tell Arjuna, you sleep on the chariot in an outfight. <laughs> he said, no, you got to fight. <laughs> and you have to fight to your maximum capacity. So when you're doing something, you should put your time, attention, efforts, whatever experience, ability into it to make it in the best possible way. That's bhakti. 
but the results ultimately are not up to you. Although your endeavor is part of getting the results, it's not the complete thing. It says that there are five factors of action, <clears throat> and the living entity is one of the or one fifth of the the the, <clears throat> the principle of the activities we perform. The endeavor, the time, the place, the ingredients, and ultimately the super soul. These are the five ingredients that make up action. So your endeavor has to be there. So over endeavor would be when we are just uh, holding on to our endeavor, but not surrender, like not depending on the Lord. Um, would that be? Over endeavor was you think that you, yeah, it's yeah. I mean, you think you're the doer and you're gonna make it happen. <laughs> mm. Okay, I think I have that problem the most. <clears throat> you, you know, this statement is. Act like it depends on you and know that it doesn't. That's how, that's how you have to think. It's almost like two opposites. You have to yeah. act like it depends on you and at the same time you have to know it doesn't. And be detached. Well, if you know that it doesn't, that's your detachment. <laughs> okay, thank you, Maharaj. How oh, wonderful. There is a question by Scarlett Mataji, and she was saying, may I humbly, as in my understanding, um, Harinakashipu, Harinakashipu were one of Lord Vishnu's gatekeepers, and as demon, Harinakashipu got many followers, where Lord Narsimha destroyed them all. In today's so-called reality, who do the atheists follow within different religions? Certain within different certain action are permitted, so should one perceive these also atheistic? Let me see, I'm a little confused. Yeah, me too. So, Mataji is saying, mm -hmm. so she's saying, yes, Ahirana Kashipu was one of Lord Vishnu's ga gatekeepers, and Hirana Kashipu got many followers, and Lord Narsima Dev destroyed them all. So in today's so-called reality, who do the atheists follow? Ah, so so Mataji's question is, who is Hiranyakashipu in Kali Yuga? <laughs> Within different religions, certain actions are permitted. So should one perceive those as atheists also? So Mataji is saying that there is religious activities outside Krishna consciousness. Maybe they are pious too, but are they still considered atheists? If you follow religious principles, then you're on the uh, platform of uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, moving in the right direction. In other words, you're moving towards piety, towards spirituality. And so you have to know what is what are the religious principles and what are the principles that are against religious principles? What are the actions that are against? <clears throat> That's why... <clears throat> Excuse me. Prabhupada writes, uh, and it was put on the back, top of the back, the Godhead. Uh, Godhead is light, nescience is darkness. So nescience means material. So one has to know side by side what is spiritual and what is not spiritual. If you don't know what is not spiritual and or what is not beneficial, you may be doing the right thing and the wrong thing also, and therefore you get very little results from the right thing. So we have to know what to avoid. And therefore, the scriptures say, anukulena and pratikul. Anukul means what's favorable for spiritual life. Pratikul means what is unfavorable. So one has to avoid those things which are unfavorable. And Rupa Goswami describes that in Nectar Devotion, in the I'm sorry, Nectar of Instructions in the third verse. There are six things that destroy one's bhakti. In verse number two, I think it is, number two of Nectar of Instructions. So avoid these six things. Mm -hmm. These are the 
these are the pillars of things we should avoid. We avoid illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating, gambling. These things destroy your progress in spiritual life. Maharaj, picking up on those, so Carlet Mataji must be asking for the other religion because there might be drinking of wine permitted. They think it's the blood of I'm Christ not, or the fish yeah, eating last I'm not, supper. I'm not here to judge other, other religious activities. Maharaj, could you speak to what Havani Kashifu's name meant? I understood it was comfortable bed. So it's more about our our personal kind of consciousness in material comforts. And he, he tried to protect himself materially in every way was the boon that he got from God. And that seemed, can you maybe get into that a little bit more so we can understand where we can see Harani Kashi Pumu today? Yeah, let me just finish with this one question here. So we got a question from the local devotees here, but um, I'm not gonna, it says that one should not find fault with other religious systems. Yeah. And so there are religious systems that are mixed with karma and gyan, and there's others that are mixed with other material things. And then there's pure religious systems. So you have to know what is the dis distinction between the two. But others, religious systems that are mixed with karma and gyan, we don't criticize them because they are there to uplift a certain class of people to a higher level of practice, although not to the highest level. They're there for people who are in lower modes. So the scriptures also, uh, uh, what's the word? Enjoin not to find fault with other religious systems because they have a purpose, although they may not be on the pure level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Wonderful, wonderful, Maharaj. Thank you so much. And uh, I got a question is, uh, you know, the, the name of Harani Kashipu means soft bed and, and gold and soft bed. So this is the indication of the materialistic conscience. They want material gain through wealth and they want to live a comfortable life. So that's the meaning of Harani Kashipu. So we're, there's a lot of little Harani Kashipus running around. <laughs> Sometimes you see them every day. <laughs> so, uh, yes. So we're not interested in these things. We're interested in, in serving the Lord. Thank you so much, Maharaj. There was one question on the chat as well. What do demons feed on? <laughs> you mean, what do you mean? Demons feed on power. They have everything. They, they're, they have, they're good at controlling things. They want power. It's, it's a type of sense gratification to be able to control other people. So that's their whole thing, to control, control, control. They're always looking to control, control, control all. And you see, even you, everything we do in today's society is controlled. I mean, your phones, everything on their phones, they know what you're saying at all times through your phones. You write an email and then you get a response somebody writes you an email and there's suggested responses coming on the email. <laughs> they, they want to control everything. <laughs> That's the, the demons feed on this whole idea of control. And they, cause they, they want to control because it's a type of, you have to understand that the Supreme personality of Godhead manifests himself in this world as, in, as Brahma the creator, as Vishnu, the maintainer, as Shiva, the destroyer. So the living entity in the material world wants to take the position of the Lord. And therefore, they can't be the creator, but they want to be the maintainer. That's the big thing with the demons. They want to take charge of everyone's life and move it in the direction they want. And 
The, and if you don't comply with them, then they become Shiva the destroyer. <laughs> now that's their mentality. Control, control, control. They have enough wealth. They're also eager to get wealth, but not as much as power. Power is a type of intoxication. Kani Kashipu was so arrogant that he thought nobody was greater than he was. When Prahlad Maharaj told him that, you know, uh, what did he say? He asked Prahlad Maharaj, where do you get your power from? When Prahlad was unable to be harmed by Harani Kashipu in so many ways, Harani Kashipu was amazed. Where do you get your power from? And Prahlad Maharaj said, I get the power from the same place you get your power. <laughs> anyone gets their power is only one source. God. So the demons worship different manifestations of the of the Lord in the form of these lower entities to get power. There are demons who actually worship. They do worship. They perform various types of rituals in order to become more and more powerful. There's Satan worship. And of course, within our tradition, they worship, you know, some of the, the Shakti energies of the Lord in order to get power. So we're, yeah. So if you want power, there's a way to get it. And power comes by way of austerity also. The demons can be very austere in order to fulfill their desires for power. Power is intoxication. <laughs> it's a real strong intoxication. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Hemi Mataji, you have a question for His Holiness? Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. Oh, I, make, uh, I make this, uh, this question, this uh, last question. And um, uh, if it's if, uh, is possible, I won't explain uh, what, uh, where, uh, why I give this question. Um, in this um, in this period, when I return, I I just come back in my home after a period of uh, brahmacharyato, and uh, I come back with uh, a lot of enthusiasm, you know, and uh, uh, happen something hurting me, and I try to understand in deep uh, what happened. Um, I don't mention a name, but uh, uh, I try. Uh, I try to um, uh, to to put a uh, boundaries uh, in relationship to healthy spiritual re relationship. Okay, and uh, I have a deep uh, relationship with one very young devotee, and I take care uh, to this devotee too many years. But I understand I'm not able um, to. Um, um, is not healthy the modality uh, um, in me and her because I'm very motherhood and uh, she need a, a motherhood and when I return here and I try to put a boundaries to the healthy relationship uh, and I try to explain with love we need uh, uh, detach a little bit because we need time. I need time to ambient myself, you know. Yeah, she, get to the point. She, yeah, and, just come to the point of question. Mm -hmm. the, the point is uh, she became violent. And one day she entered in my home and destroyed all. And destroyed also my, my, my altar with Ladu Gopal deities. She have, a, she have a strong reaction because she, I understand she feeling pushed away, but this is not my intention because I'm feeling she have, a, she is, she have too much control in me. Okay, so what, and, uh, what are you going to do? 
And I try to understand why happen this type of things in devotee. Is Maya is uh, is another type of energy? Why devotee have uh, sometimes this type of uh, violent reaction? I yeah. try to understand in because I try to understand what I do. You should know what is a devotee and what is not a devotee, or what appears to be a devotee but is not a devotee. Devotee is, number one, quality of a devotee is kind to all living entities. So she's exhibiting qualities of a demon. So she's closer to a demon than she is a devotee. Although she may be associating with devotees and doing some devotional things, her, her consciousness is impure. She doesn't understand what is devotional service. She needs some education. She needs guidance. And if she doesn't take that, actually, she's no better than an, just an ordinary materialist. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think you're living in illusion. It's your illusion to think that everyone who practices Krishna consciousness is, you know, a pure devotee. It's not like that. <laughs> Devotees can also... Uh, a devotee, when you actually understand what a devotee is, you will put everybody in the same category. So I think it's, you really don't really understand what it means to be a devotee. You have to see by their symptoms, not so much by their, by whether they wear T-lock or whether they have carrying a Joppa bead. What are their symptoms? What is their character? Devotees understood by their character their activities, not so much, well, you know, anybody can dress up as a devotee. doesn't mean that they're a devotee. And maybe I make something wrong because I ask myself what, what no, I do. I know, I know you, Elena. You're just very innocent and simple, and you think everybody is so nice. But it's not like that. <laughs> You have to protect yourself from getting exploited by such people. That's all. I understand that is I'm not very strong, maybe. No, it's not you. No, you're, you're strong in one sense, but you're not. You're you have this idea that everybody is like you, nice, <laughs> but it's not like that. <laughs> you're nice, but not. The world is not always a reflection of your consciousness. It's it's something else. So you have to judge by their by their activities, their character, their behavior. You get to know people by associating with people. And when you see things that are not, you know, Krishna conscious, then you have to be careful. And maybe you have to distance yourself from that so not to be exploited by that. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Okay, Nina, I think we reached the end, right? Yes, Maharaj, I know you have to leave now. There was one last question from a devotee. She was asking, did you mention any name of a book last time? Um, I think it was Krishna's Way, Natural Living, but any other book, Maharaj, that you mentioned last time or no? I think Krishna's way, natural living. That's yeah. That's the book. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the book here. You can see it. Can you see it? Yeah. And that's the cover, anyway. Yeah, it's a small, about a hundred pages. How to get back to a more natural lifestyle and, and the importance of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Maharaj. Next time I'm going to open the cans for you and then give it to you. Yes. Did not do the service yeah. properly. I'm Please accept. Call, next time I have a can, I'm going to call you up and get but, your get your. It will be such an honor. <laughs> thank you, Maharaj. Devotees, we have to end the call. Maharaj is about to leave. We let's offer our humble obeisances at your um, lotus feet. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful class. Looking for waiting for you, Maharaj.
Krishna Maharaj, today is Her Grace Lalitangi Radha Mataji's birthday, and oh, my yeah. birthday. birthday. We cannot yes. see you, Mataji. Can you? Thank you, Mataji. Yeah, we can. <laughs> Please accept our humble obeisances. Best wishes on your appearance day in the world. <laughs> oh, Maharaj. <laughs> please uh, help forgive my offenses and please bless me to always serve the devotees and the Lord. All right. When I come to Charlotte, I'll give you some service. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. <laughs> Since you asked. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mother. Thank you. My basis is to all the devotees. Vanshakalpa to Rubi. Thank you, Mother. 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 Thank you